Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Let your Shekinah glory, God, be in this place tonight. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Jesus, 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 thank you, Lord, amen, amen. Hallelujah, it's Good Friday, amen? Amen. amen. Hallelujah, preparing, praise God, for our Savior, for the Resurrection Sunday, amen. that we give glory to the Lord, amen? Amen. But tonight, tonight, I want to invite you to a wedding. Yes. Is that all right? Amen. I want you. I want you to just sit back and, and just picture what we're going to walk through tonight. We're we're invited to a celebration. We're invited to and and an, like an inauguration. We're just we're invited to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords tonight. We're going to sit in on His wedding. Praise God. Thank you. 
got to know. You already know him as favorite. So now his bride, the redeemed, has prepared herself for the way. She has permitted, been permitted to dress in fine linens, dazzling white and clean. For the fine linen signifies the righteous acts of the saints, the ethical conduct, personal integrity, moral courage, and godly character of the believers. She's permitted to dress in fine linens. Praise God. It is the same way in your home. You're permitted to dress for your mate in fine linen stuff. Your character should be above reproach. Your kindness should start at home before you leave out of the door. Nine says, then the angel said to me, write, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, further, these are the true and exact words of God. Welcome to the way. See, God revealed his divine plan for our redemption through the human relationship called marriage. He began his plan with the wedding of Adam and Eve. Then he, his plan went on with the wedding of Christ and his church. God used the covenant of marriage to illustrate his own covenant relationship with the nation of Israel. God now uses the covenant of marriage to illustrate his new covenant with the church and the bride of Christ. There is no marriage of the church without the appearance of Christ, and therefore he must be manifested in our life. Revelation 19 and 9 Blessed are they which are called into the marriage supper of the Lamb. Welcome to the wedding. Jesus told his disciples he was going to prepare a place for those who would receive him as their Savior. John 14, 1 through 3. It goes on and says, one says, do not let your heart be troubled, amplified, afraid, cowardly. Believe confidently in God and trust in him. Have faith, hold on to it, rely on it. Keep on going. Keep on going. Keep on going. And believe, he said also in me. In my father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you because I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and I will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And one of the things I learned as I was studying this, the Jewish wedding tradition was that, that there was a building of a home. And, and, and when I realized that God is preparing a place, we've all used that scripture before. He's preparing a place and where he is, we're going to be. But I did not realize in my natural mind that he was preparing a place for the wedding, for the bride of Christ. In the Jewish traditions, that the, the, the man, the groom, would go to his father's house and he would build the room onto it. He was preparing for his bride. So what Jesus is telling us is, I'm at home. I'm preparing a room for my bride. That was interesting to me. And then I thought, the Lord, what if they got six boys? Does everybody build a room? That's a mansion. He's preparing a mansion. And if he said if it wasn't so, I would tell you that. Oh, he's building us a room. And then since most bridegrooms came at night, she slept in her wedding apparel and her garments, and she placed a lamp in the window. And if she left her home during the day, she also wore a veil to show that she was taken. See, I, I'm sorry to say, now we can't tell the married women from the single women because they all dress alike. They all show too much. <laughs> You know, it used to be a time that when you had a husband, you would be modest about your appearance. 
I guess it depends on who's running the house. But anyway, <laughs> but when she left out of the house, she would wear a veil to let them know I'm a taken woman. Don't approach me. Don't Facebook me. Don't text me. I'm taken. Revelation 19 and 9 says, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Welcome to the way. God the Father chose us in Christ before the foundation of this world. Ephesians 1. Therefore God the Father is the father of the groom and God the Son is the father of the bride. Woo. They determined the price of our salvation which was shed by the blood of Christ. 1 Corinthians 6. And understand too that, that when a man came to get a woman, he didn't just come and take her from her father's house. He had to leave something. He had to be worthy to take that daughter. He had to be worthy to go in front of the father and ask for her hand in marriage. And then he had to bring an endowment to say she's worthy to be my wife. Ooh, I miss that. <laughs> okay, well, when we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior and our Lord, we become the road to him. He becomes our husband. And we tell the enemy, I'm taken. There's no coming back. Our ring is our indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. See, it saves with us. Never take off your wedding ring. Never take off that circle of eternity between you and your spouse. But with Jesus, that circle is the Holy Spirit that rules and reigns within us. Our covenant of marriage was written in his word. During this time, we are to keep ourselves pure and spotless by the reading of the word, and we should show others that we belong to Christ. Ephesians 5, 26 to 27. So that he might sanctify the church, having cleansed her by the washing of the water in the word of God. So that in turn, he might present to the church that he might present the church to himself in glorious splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy, set apart for God, and blameless. See, it used to be something when you wore that white dress on your wedding day, because you kept yourself for your future husband. Oh, times have changed. Mm -hmm. Not just in the world in my life, too. I'm not throwing shade on anybody, but understand, modesty, sanctification meant something in the day because you knew that God was present and he was watching over you. And when you stepped in in that white dress in that wedding ceremony, that was supposed to mean something. Splendor with that spot of wrinkle, holy, set apart, and blameless. That's where he sees us. God sees us just like that. Once we receive Christ in our life as our Lord and our Savior, and know that he died for our sins, he's washed us with the word. The blood of the Lamb covered us, and now we're blameless. We should also be making our wedding garments through the good works we allow the Holy Spirit to accomplish in our lives. Each time we take the cup of the Lord's Supper, we reaffirm our vows to Him. When God the Father sees that our house is ready, He will send Jesus to come and take us away, and we will be with Him forever. 1 Thessalonians 4. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a shout of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with a blast of a trumpet of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. I want to be here when he comes. If I'm in the ground, I want to be resurrected. I want to be here when he comes. And I want to go back. So I need to keep my life pure and sanctified. And blameless in the Oh, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I haven't made it there yet, but 
You know, people say, oh, you know my heart. Yeah, be scared to say that. Yeah, you do know your heart. <laughs> That's why we repent quickly and we get it right with hell. Revelation 19 and 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife has made herself ready. So now y'all understand why I am just talking to you. She has made herself ready. Now because Christ was a lamb suffering for our sin, he links the memory of his grief with the manifestation now of his glory. And as he was a lamb to be redeemed for his church, so does he appear as a lamb in the marriage supper, in his splendor and in his glory. One reason why he does this is because he is especially glorious in his character of the Lamb of God. His humbleness as he allowed himself to come down as a man and walk on this earth and even be crucified for the sake of you and I. He humbled himself. He humbled himself. Knowing what was going to happen to him. He humbled himself. Knowing that it was going to be pain. We need to humble ourselves. All oh, things may be hard. People may be cruel. Words may be sad. But he humbled himself. And he's not asking us to go to the cross. He's just asking us to accept him as Lord and Savior. He said, I've done the work. I finished the course. I've done everything that you just, just believe that I am the Lord God Almighty. As his glory fills this room. Because he loves. 
loved us. I just cannot conceive how he got off his throne and all of his splendor and glory and came to this earth for me and for you. How he came down and he humbled himself. And although they tried to take him out so many times, they couldn't do it until his time was up. As he said, I got to be about my father's business. See, we got to still be about our father's business. We, we can't let the cross be forgotten. We can't, we can't let it say that was something in the past. No, that's here today. We all carry our personal cross for Christ, and we can't let it down. Jesus loved us. He pitied those. He had compassion even unto his death. So in the day of his marriage, he comes out again in his highest and noblest character, glorious as a lamb. It is as a lamb that he celebrates the marriage supper of the bride and the church. See, he's never stopped. He will never stop. Eternity goes on forever. And he said, as long as they will come, I will accept them. As long as they call on my name, I will be there for you. He has not forgotten. Oh, you may say, oh, I called on him and he didn't answer. Oh, just wait a while. Just wait a while. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. Oh, just wait a while. I rejoice to know that in the day when Jesus takes his church by the hand and leaves us home but to the Father, he will appear in the character of, of, of the Most High God and he will stand and we will see him in his glorious being and we will know that he has come for us. Oh, when he comes on that great way of us and when he calls us home, whether we be in the ground or whether we be watching the sky, when he breaks the sky, I just want to know that I'm going home with the mess. I want to know that I'm going home. So then you see on the day of his marriage, when he would be in the best of his attire, because he's going to those that he loves, Christ comes into his church robed in a garment that's going to be spectacular. And he's going to be, he's going to appear before all those that deny him and those that love him. He's going to appear before all. And it's going to be a great and glorious day because we know that he's a redeemer for all that call upon his name. He died for the just as well as the unjust. Oh, because when, I, when he died, he died for me before I knew who he was. Oh, but when I called out his name, when I had enough of the world, when I had enough of, of this thing that was called joy and happiness in the street, when I called upon his name and said, Lord, save me, he heard me and he answered my call. And just the way he answered me, he will answer you. Oh, when that glory is getting up morning, I, I know that our Savior bore my sins. And he bore the sins of this world in his own body. And he allowed them to nail him to a tree. Although they mocked him and scandalized his name and made fun of him, he knew he had a job to do. See, they thought that just because he was 12 years old and he went to the temple and he talked to the leaders and they did not did not understand, but this young man got so much knowledge, and he said, don't you know I have to be about my father's business, but going to the cross was his father's business. And he had to finish the course. I have to be about my father's business. I have to allow them to take me to the cross. I have to allow them to beat me Drag me through the streets. See, he said, I have to be about my father's business. But he went 
because he knew that in his majesty to come, he knew that when it was all over, and he got up again, and he knew he had a home that he was preparing for his bride. So he had to go, he was a carpenter, so he had to go build a room. Because that's what the custom says. And he says, where I am, there you should be also. Revelation 5.13 And every creature which is in heaven, and on the earth, and under the earth, and such are in the sea, and all that are all of them, her saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sit upon the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. See, he knew, just like we should know, that this isn't it. That what we're going through right now is this is just a drop in the bucket. Because what he has for us, what he has for us in the kingdom, is more than we can ever imagine. So yeah, we're going to go through some bumps and we're going to go through some bad days and, and we're going to have some headaches and oh, we're not going to feel good but greater is coming. Just hold on. Don't give up. Hold on. Just keep going. Greater is coming. He knew that when he went to the cross, it was going to be a time that he had to walk through. But he knew when he got up that his father had a mansion waiting for him and he was able to go and sit at the right hand of the Father. Don't stop thinking. Don't make it, don't make it so carnal or so small that you think that what you're going through is important. It is. But, but understand, you've got to be about your Father's business because there's so much in this world that needs to be done. He needs you. He needs you. Don't let him die and be in vain. Don't give up. Don't let us die and be in vain. He loves you. And to everyone who's watching tonight, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, if you never ask him to come into your life, let tonight be your night. Amen. Don't leave here knowing that, that I could have been saved or, or I should have been saved or, or I don't know how to get saved. There's an answer for every question that you have. That's right. He died for you. He's offering you eternal life in Christ. Don't give up. Run to the nearest church Sunday. Run to the altar. Be there. Understand that he's going to be waiting on you. He's waiting on you. Amen. Tonight we're going to do communion. But I would like for, instead of us coming apart, I would make us all to come as one family, one body, one unity. We're a family.